Money Vikings, welcome back. I got a really special one for you today. I wanna to talk about when you will be financially free. Um, it's traditionally what we call, when can I retire? But I like to use the word um, financial freedom because I don't really totally like the word retire. I think a lot of people are turned off by that because it has this um, sort of connotation of you know, maybe being too old to do things or I don't know what it is, but basically I like to reframe it to when can you be financially free? And I have a couple of things here to show you. I want to show you a modeling tool from NerdWallet. And then I want to show you a Money Vikings uh, chart that we made that kind of gets to the heart of this. And what it does is this modeling allows us to be in the present moment and set up what we need to do to get to where we want to be in 10, 20 years, whatever it might be. And a lot of this can be done you know, with automation and can be done with, without a lot of pain, really, <clears throat> as we go through. So um, I thought of a new one recently. I'm gonna call uh, Money Vikings is, uh, it's, we're calling it pop, I'm calling it pop personal finance. And what that means is we're trying to make it interesting and fun and kind of uh, bite-sized chunks and nuggets of information that people can use to uh, build wealth. And you guys know that I love the comics and the pop art and uh, the cards and all the other stuff like that. <clears throat> but we also, you know, we also like to bring in the health aspect into what we call true wealth, right? Which is everything. It's your relationships. It's your hobbies. It's your, um, you know, your building wealth in terms of the numbers and your personal finance. And then it's your health as well. So you take those four and you build them together. If you had one of those Venn diagrams or everything combined, um, I should put this in the in our book. Uh, if you put all those together, you have true wealth in the middle. So anyway, um, with that, I want to talk about, so what do I mean by financial freedom or quote unquote retirement? So this is different for each person because what it has to do with is what I how I define it is when your passive income from passive income machines and from investments spins off enough income for long enough that it basically every month covers your costs, right? And so, I mean, you can have a really high falutin lifestyle, but that's obviously going to require a, a huge nest egg and a huge amount of support over the years. That's why a lot of people, you know, they end up not being able to retire ever because their lifestyle creep, right? So people think, well, I make 50,000 now, but when I make 70,000 is when I'll save. Okay, then they make 70,000, and then after they make 70,000, okay, when I make 90,000. But they, they, the years clip by and they never do it. So again, that's why I'm a big fan of automation. Gotta just get that money invested right away out of, out of your line of sight. Um, so that's the idea. So if you have, you know, and then I do, I do still, you know, from the, the research I've done, I still like to look at the classic 4% rule. And the idea behind that is that you can safely withdraw 4% of a nest egg that's in some diversified investments, has some growth stocks, some bonds, um, some CDs, right? Maybe a little real estate exposure. But if you have a million dollar portfolio, you can take 4% of that every year out and it's gonna last a long time. The idea is 30 plus years. Um, so you have a million dollar portfolio, you can take $40,000 out of that each year uh, if it's invested diversified way in a, you know, with like, you know, maybe 40%. Uh, I think the classic model was 50% S&P 500 growth stocks and maybe 50% bonds. Um, but, you know, there's different ways you can kind of play with that over time depending on how things are, are looking. Um, so I do go by that. Uh, but the first thing I want to share with you is kind of a cool Money Vikings graphic here that we made a few years ago. And as you can see, the point of this is how to save a million dollars. So regardless of how much income you want or when you want to retire, maybe you just have a million as a goal. And that does seem to become a kind of goal these days that people like to try to hit over the long run. Um, and it's a pretty good sign if a person can hit that goal. As you saw in some of our earlier videos with the average 401k balances, if you can hit a million dollar investing savings goal, you are definitely in the top 10% of, of everybody, um, maybe even the top 5%. But anyway, what this shows is, so if you get a 10% annual return, which I know is probably a little bit high, 
The model we'll look at with NerdWallet uses a 6 to 7% return, which is probably a little better. Um, but the S&P 500, for what it's worth, I mean, has many, many double-digit return years. Now, it does have a couple of double-digit down years as well, but not as many. But it has many, many double-digit return years. So, I don't know, 10% is not impossible. Um, you know, maybe it's better to use 7%. But again, these are models, okay? So before you go crazy in the comments with, you know, please leave comments, please like and subscribe. I love all that stuff. And please ask questions and let's go back and forth and talk. I like to respond to every comment if I can and, and talk to y'all about different ideas and if these models make sense, um, what you're doing, what's working, what's not working. The idea is for us to help each other. That's the whole point of Money Vikings is that there really isn't a very good education system in this country for personal finance. And so we're just trying to put it all on our channel and our blog. Um, so do try, check out truewealth.moneyvikings.com if you want to look at stuff in a written format and all the different blog categories are there with investing, credit cards, budgeting, you know, family, etc. whatever it might be. Okay. So what this is showing is, so how to save a million dollars, right? Let's say that's the goal, which is a great goal. Let's say you want to do that in 10 years, okay? You want to be, let's say you're 35 years old, and by the time you're 45, you want to have a million dollars, okay? So at a 10% annual return, you'd have to be saving $4,960 a month. So that's pretty high, right? That's a really high savings rate. Um, there are people in the FIRE movement that tend to pull that off uh, because they go real aggressive in saving sometimes half of their income, and that's how they do retire uh, or have financial freedom, you know, at young, young ages of like 35 to 45 years old. Okay, so that's that. So let's say you want to do it and, and you're thinking, okay, 10 years, that's a little too aggressive, maybe 20 years, right? So in 20 years, if you can look at a 10% return, which isn't actually far off, the S&P 500 over the uh, life, I think can get close to 10% if you're reinvesting the dividends, um, you'd have to do $1,380 a month to, for 20 years in order to get to that million. Um, there are some high earners that can pull that off and especially if they're at a company with a match. So that's just something to consider. I mean, if you're in your um, mid to late 20s right now and you're making a high income, hey, try to get that number going because before you know it, you'll be in your 40s and you'll have a pretty nice nest egg, great. Right? Okay, so that's pretty cool. If you wanna do it in 30 years, it's only $481 a month. So this shows the, you know, the other thing that this totally shows, obviously, is the power of time, right? So the more time you have, really the less of a contribution you have to make because the time does all the work, the compounding does the work. And then if you want to do 40 years, which is a traditional, you know, working lifespan, if someone starts working at, let's say, 20 after college, and they work for 40 years until they're 60, or they get out of college, let's say, at 24 to 64, um, really, for a million dollars, they'd only need $179 a month. Um, but as you can see, the more one saves, the faster to a million, our little Money Vikings guy right there. So that's the first thing I want to show you guys. The second thing I want to show you, I want to move this out of the way, and I want to go to this here. This is the Nerd Wallet uh, right here. It's the retirement calculator at Nerd Wallet. I like a lot of the Nerd Wallet stuff, the way it's set up and everything. So this I'm showing here, so this is, I'm just putting in a, you can put in your numbers here. You have a person that's 35, let's say, right? I'm not 35, I'm way older than that. But anyway, let's just say this is a 35 year old. Let's say the person has been working and contributing something to their 401k. So maybe they started working at 23. So they've been in the workforce, you know, 12, 13 years. So it is conceivable they could have about 120,000 at that point. Um, or I'm sorry, that's 120,000 is their income. They could have a current uh, uh, retirement of about 200,000. The market's done really well over the last 13 years. So ever since they've been working, they've actually been doing pretty well with those headwinds, or no, those wins in their sales, I should say, not against them. And let's say they are doing a monthly contribution of $1,000. So what that shows is here, you, you plug in these numbers and it says they'll have 1.3 million. Now this says they're going to need 3.5. This is a, um, it, it, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get stuck on what they need. This is, this is, this is retiring at 57. Um, I guess you can, you know, you can put this up here higher. Let's say 62. Okay. At 62, they'll have almost $2 million. 
um, monthly retirement budget that, you know, you can shift that up and down monthly contribution, but it does show you like your target. So this person to have what nerd wallet is saying, uh, they should be doing 2,700 a month, right. To get the full, what they say is 3.5 million needed. Now, nerd wallet's very conservative. They use a 6% return, uh, which is very conservative. And then they throw in an inflation factor, I think of two or 3% as well. Um, so that's actually good stuff. Those are all good things to remember. But anyway, I just think these are pretty cool. Um, now you can take somebody, let's just go aggressive here. Let's put, let's put someone at 45. Okay. Let's say they make 160,000 a year. Let's say they've been saving really aggressively for a long, for 20 plus years. Let's say they have half a million dollars. Okay. And their monthly contribution, let's say that they're doing, I don't know, let's just say they're doing 2000 a month. Okay. Um, so this then shows, so if they want to retire at 62, um, they'll have over $2 million. It, again, NerdWallet says you need 3.9, but see these numbers change a lot. If you, if you, and that's why I showed you that first chart, if you mess with the returns, so returns are critical. Um, and this is why it's really ill-advised to be in a, you know, low, um, low returning, like just a cash savings that's going to give a person less than 1%. They're really never going to make it to any kind of big nest egg. Um, so they're going to have to be living pretty frugally in retirement. Um, but you know, teach their own that works too. So anyway, you know, so I just want to show you these things. Um, a couple different, you know, models, models aren't perfect. Um, please leave your comments. Um, models are to get us thinking in a certain way and to frame the issue and the problem. And the way I look at it, if you're doing something now is better than nothing. And you're going to end up at a stronger, better place if you're doing something now and thinking now than if you just bury your head in the sand and never think about it. So I think, you know, 15, 20 years from now, you're gonna be like, hey, it wasn't perfect, but at least I did something, right? And it made a difference. So, hey, with that, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all on the next one. Bye.